What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 335 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk Podcast. This is the Hot Tags edition of the week, where we're going to be breaking down some of the current events, rumors, gossip, news, and anything else that went down in the world of professional wrestling and sports entertainment over the past couple of days. Who is we? Well, I'm your host as always, Tony Mango, and joining me on the line here, Drew White. Uh, the official co-host for this episode, maybe every episode going forward, and maybe no more episodes, or maybe one episode a week or two, who knows. Who knows, maybe you'll be hosting the next episode, and I won't be there. Well, I've been, we, we, I've joked about that for five years, I don't think it's going to happen anytime <laughs> soon. Well, I'm just going to remove that from the schedule then. All right, going to give you a chance, uh, but. <laughs> damn it, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Uh, we'll get into next week's episode or next uh, the next episode at the very least when we get into that. But today, it's hot tag time because it's Monday night. And even though we've had like normally it's like, oh, you know, just after a pay-per-view, let's wait on the hot tags. Well, the pay-per-view was Friday for some fucking reason. So not quite the same here. We actually had a couple extra days, but not a whole other thing happening uh, all this week. This was a pretty lackluster week, but that's OK because we've had some long ass episodes and I'm totally cool with the short one. <laughs> You know, and we got other stuff coming up this week, too. So, yeah, lots of stuff still coming your way. But who knows how long it's going to be? I don't know. I'm not timing it out. I don't really care. And, you know, because you're listening and you can check on the YouTube video. It's already up at that point. So, you know, more than current Tony and current Drew know. That's because you're in the future. And I don't know. Maybe I'm in the future, Tony. You can't speak for everybody. Oh, you don't have that Internet connection anymore. Uh. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. I guess I, if anything, I'm like maybe like five minutes in the future, which is nothing. So what do we do five minutes in the future? Uh, We pretend that like we actually know what we're talking about, but we never do. Ah, that sounds normal. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go back in time a little bit to the first thing that happened over these couple of little notes that we've got going on. Some notes about the WWE Greatest Royal Rumble event that happened on Friday. Uh, One thing being that there was some leaked audio of the, or not leaked audio, really, like it's not really like leaked behind the scenes or something like that, but the crowd reaction to that video that had been posted about um, the whole co-branded pay-per-views and stuff. First off, uh, the actual reaction for that was they released a whole apology thing saying, like, this is fucking terrible, this is a disgrace, WWE showed something with women on it, and that's appalling and whatever which is just ridiculous, but the crowd didn't seem to have that much of a problem with Carmella drinking that water because the, <laughs> the crowd reaction is them being like, oh, shit, look at that one. Like, you know? <laughs> Have you listened to I that? Love, I haven't listened to it yet. I've, I've saw some people post about it. I find it really dumb. I, I, mean, I, don't, I mean, I don't find a crowd reaction dumb. I just find it so freaking weird. Like the Middle Eastern culture, we we uh, we talked about it a little bit on Friday, and, and if like the week before that we mentioned kind of like the Middle East, what's been going on in the Middle East on like the uh, the mailbag that we did at the time, but boy, it's just like it, I'm very, really happy that the people of Saudi Arabia are starting to come along come along to this whole hey, women are you know pretty equal, pretty cool, <laughs> yeah. you know, not an object, just like normal stuff, you know. It, it it's crazy to think that. America is this crazy backwards nation with fucked up stuff, but we kind of got that right, even though we don't have that right at the same time. So I don't know. I, I, it's, I just, it's so pretty much, it's just like the people in charge are kind of out of touch. Maybe yeah. they have more in with Vince McMahon as we thought. Hmm. Now there's some booking tonight on Monday night raw. That was definitely Vince McMahon booking, but Oh yes. Uh, I just think it's funny that the, like, the crowd reaction is just kind of like, whoa, look at her. Like, she's drinking water. That is so hot. You know, because <laughs> it's not like a really risque video. It's not like, um, you know, like when Maurice used to do like those videos of her in the bathtub, like <clears throat> that I could understand being like, uh oh, got to do the whole like cartoon collar with the steam coming out of it type of thing. It's just, um, Carmel's just drinking a, uh, you know, a couple sips of water from a water bottle. <laughs> Imagine if they did the Trish Stratish video package of her and tables to Bubba Ray Dudley. <laughs> and they try to do that now. Or that <laughs> video of her with the hose and the see-through shirt. Ooh. 
people just kill themselves. Yeah, that one. <laughs> it's just <laughs> that's an odd thing that came out of this. Another thing, though, this one's even funnier. I think the prince had a, a suggestion of some people that he wanted to see at the event, and supposedly the people that he said were he really wants to see the Undertaker, the Ultimate Warrior, and Yokozuna. <laughs> You know, I think that they might be able to get those last two. <laughs> well, that's apparently the reason why they have that Hiroki Sumi guy on there was because they were like, I don't know, let's find somebody who looks like Yokozuna. So that was the whole when reason why he... they brought in the sumo wrestler. When they brought in that sumo wrestler, I really thought that this was about to be one of those uh, shows where they just it's a bunch of random ass people who have no correlation to wrestling at all. Kind of but... like um the... Oh god, which one was it? Was it uh ninety five Royal Rumble where it was like all like and this guy's from the AWA and this guy's from like uh is that Smoky the first, Mountain or whatever. It, was that Shawn Michaels' first win? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That I think yeah, that that seems right. You know, I it's funny, I was I was watching a video earlier of like the that like someone like actually went the time to count down thirty all thirty WrestleMania's worst the best. And I think that one was one of the worst ones on their list. And I was like, man, I, that can't be the case because that's Shawn Michaels going one to the 30. So. Yeah, but the, the group of people in there, it's really bad. I haven't watched that match. That I watched that match on WWE 20, on demand when that was a thing. And I was like that one and they had the first Royal Rumble. And I remember the first Rumble fucking sucking. But that I felt like awful. that one wasn't too bad. Well, it's like the highlight reel people are people like the Jacob and Eli Blue and stuff. Like, there's really only a handful of names in there. And yeah. um, thankfully, Michaels is the one that won that. But yeah, I thought it was really funny the idea that it was like, you know, so who are some of your favorites? Who do you like to see on here? Oh, I really love The Undertaker. Oh, that's cool. We can get him back. You know, his hip's actually really feeling really good lately. Cool. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. I mean, good casket match or something. Yeah. Who else you like? Big fan of Ultimate Warrior. Uh, no, he he must. He, I wonder if he's like, oh, did Yokozuna go into the? He went to the Hall of Fame recently, right? You should like, get yeah, him on. Did. I bet people would like him. Yeah, he probably also. I think the last time he might have watched wrestling might have been like the Raw after WrestleMania 30 or something like that, because that might have been the last time he saw Ultimate Warrior, which is the last time we saw Ultimate Warrior. But I don't know. He probably the last time he actually watched was probably something like 1995. <laughs> He was a he was a prince, right? He can't be that old. Yeah, I think it was the prince that was the one that said that. Well, I mean, you could be a prince and be thirty something, forty something, if you really wanted to. You know. I love how like the three people he chose were all of them would be over the age of fifty. Mm-hmm. Like they're all yeah, from really... that new generation or earlier era. Are they really that far behind? I get that they're further behind when it comes to Western civilization and culture and a lot of and a lot of things. There's a re- there's a reason why in a lot of Middle Eastern countries and like third world countries that like their technology and they get stuff like years after we get it in most cases. But do you think they're showing like new generation and uh, <laughs> new generation WWE in uh, Saudi Arabia because they can't show women? I got a feeling it's probably just that was what he was watching when he was a kid. And he was just sort of really like, I really, them. really remember them, and they were great, and can you bring those people back? And it's like, I can't bring anybody back from the dead. <laughs> well, no, nah, hey, listen, if if he had, ah, uh, shit, the retributionist from Town of Salem, and he could resurrect <laughs> people, I think well, you could resurrect them. I also thought it was kind of funny that it's like, the three people that were mentioned are two people that are dead, and one person who's the dead man. <laughs> Maybe thought that like the Undertaker would show up and like ri- rise him from the grave because he's the under you know the Undertaker. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, but that at least the very least uh, explains Hiroki Sumi because they didn't give him any kind of a spotlight. Like he came out and then he just got eliminated by Mark Henry. So that was stupid. <laughs> I guess they were just like, well, we have to have a sumo guy on here to to appease the prince, you know, which is very like awkward too. Well, and they also, um, one of the reports going out was saying that Big Show was supposed to be in this match, like he was previously announced for, but that he suffered another injury. Hmm. So that's an older name that would have been around that couldn't. Was he doing stuff recently? No, he hasn't really done anything. He's been out with an injury for a couple of months, but Hmm. he was doing like some promotional stuff for it, and they had him down in like posters and stuff, but he re-injured something and... I guess he's just going to spend a little bit more time out of the running and stuff. 
Remember last year when he said this year was going to be the, his last mania? Yeah, and didn't end up really coming to pass. <laughs> <laughs> I think recently, I don't remember when it was, he said something along the lines of like, yeah, nah. He's just sort of like, oh, I'm going to stick around. God, I, I know you love the big show. I really don't care for the big show. I like him as a person, but I don't care for him as like an entertainer. I don't like but, love watching his matches or something like that. I just, I appreciate I don't think him. Anyone- I don't think anyone loves watching Big Show matches. Yeah. Like, I don't want him to retire yet. I want him to have some kind of a good send-off. But I'm cool with him not being around right now, you know? What kind of cool send-off would you even do for him now? Hmm. Like, I, I, there's no way you could convince me that you could build him up for a feud with Braun Strowman. I, no, they've had their matches already. Oh, fuck. They already did those matches in, like, 2016. Yeah. So that's that's done already, but... I don't know. At the very least, I, I want to make sure that he gets a little bit more credit than he's been getting the past couple of years, but I really don't know who else he could work with that would be all that interesting. Like, him versus Samoa Joe, that could be maybe kind of fun, but that's really it. Like, I don't want to see Big Show versus Braun Strowman again. I don't want to see Big Show versus Baron Corbin. Uh, I feel like I've always seen Big Show versus Corbin. If we have, it's fucking forgettable. Uh, it seems like it. I feel like I've seen that on like a raw or something. I wouldn't be too shocked if we've if we have just something like right after Corbin had come up to the main roster or something like that. I we probably have. To think about it, Corbin's been on like the main roster for like three years now. Yeah, and he's done like jack shit. Exactly. I it's like, thinking. oh, he's a former United States champion. He held that for like a month and lost to Sin Cara a bunch of times. Hey, he's a former Money in the Bank winner. Yeah, he lost that. Oh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner. Oh, well, that didn't go anywhere. Who did he win the U.S. Championship from? He beat... God, who did he beat? AJ Styles, maybe? That sound. Did he take it off? Yeah, I feel like he took it off Styles at one point. I just forgot that he was a U.S. champion. I really thought that he was, one of... was going to be one of those people... That we would like look him up like ten years after he leaves WWE and be like, oh wait, he didn't hold a single title. Wow. Hmm. Oh wait, he's held the United States Championship, but yeah, he didn't win anything in NXT. Remember that that... there was a short time frame where we were like, wow, Baron Corbin's actually progressed really well. He could be a good star. And NXT or when he came to the main roster, because there was actually a there's a stint. Like right after he got on the main roster for a couple months, where I, I really bought into him because I was, I I thought it was just okay in NXT. Like I thought it was interesting, but I didn't. I just I the his bald spot or his fading hairline <laughs> is one of I can't take him seriously. In <laughs> uh, in NXT when he first came, I was just like I'm not impressed, and then he started to get better, and I was like wow he's improving a lot, and then he just didn't get any better since then. Like main roster Baron Corbin, I think is. He needs more improvement, but oh, speaking of uh, an NXT guy, another one of those notes. There was a little transition there. Uh, the reason why we didn't see Drew McIntyre on the pay per view was he couldn't get at his uh, work visa issues solved. I saw that. That's interesting. That he, I'm surprised he didn't have stuff like that figured out, considering he's an international wrestler already. Yeah, that's kind of confusing. But I'm the type of person who has no idea how any of that works. I still don't even have a passport. <laughs> you don't. Uh, well, you, you've never left the country, right? Nope. I've never even yeah. been on the uh, west coast. Plain, the well, okay. I haven't been. The furthest I've been west is like Colorado. Yeah, I've been like. I think the furthest I've been out west has been like Virginia. Uh, I was, I was like, <laughs> that's pretty bad. I was gonna be like, I was, I was really open. Yeah, the furthest I've been out left is Philly. No, nah, that's <laughs> <laughs> never been to Philly. No, I'm just kidding. I was just there the other day. Um, and didn't get shot. Hey, oh, congratulations! <laughs> my my, my parents, my parents went to Philly actually a couple of weeks ago because uh they wanted to. They were going to New Jersey actually, but they stopped through Philly because my stepfather's a big Rocky fan, so he wanted to like run up the steps and get a video oh, of it. <laughs> so I've ran up the steps a couple of times, and once you do it one time, then you go. Yeah, I don't ever need to do it again. And then if you're with somebody who hasn't ever done it, and you're like. Ugh. God damn it. <laughs> if I'm ever in Philly with you, I'm making you record it and we'll play the music while multiple, well, I'll reenact the whole scene. Multiple people do that. That's the thing. They'll get out the their cell phones and they'll play the song and run up and stuff and 
Never mind. I don't want to do that. It's That's funny okay. to like walk in front of them or something and slow <laughs> them down. <laughs> No, it'd be funny if you're like walking down and like you like get in front of them and then you play the oh shit my bad and you both go to the right and then to the left try to get by each other. <laughs> you just be like, yeah, I like Creed better. <laughs> just <laughs> Mr. T is the best. Yeah, let's go Thunderlips. Ooh, Thunderlips. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> Speaking of movies, though, we have two movie topics. Bam! Look at that fucking segue. Paige's movie, Fighting With My Family, which I always refer to as Wrestling With My Family, and then I have to always redo it. Uh, the release date has been pushed back. It was going to be September 1st. Before? Okay, never mind. I got my answer. <laughs> yep, there you go. September 1st was going to be when it was going to come out, but supposedly the reason why they moved it from there was they want to get away from the Predator release, which is like, really? That's the one you're worried about? Predator? I mean, I don't know. The whole... The whole big thing with this movie is they got the rock for like 30 seconds. So it is a pretty big deal. I know, I know predator and, uh, wrestling fans, you know, they're, they're about the same genre, but man, that's, I, I, there's, no one's going to watch this movie anyways. Right. Like that's I've, already going to be something that I would have thought would have been not released in theaters. And yeah. the fact that they're being released in theaters is already a step up, but September 1st, isn't even like the actual like the normal type of time where that's going to be around because September 7th is that Friday. So that comes in between I like looking up the things that are around that the 31st of August is Juliet Naked, some romance drama. Kin, which is the story of like a kid finds a gun and he like uses it to protect his brother and stuff. They just the the trailers for that before Avengers, the Little Stranger. I have no idea what that is, but it's a horror film. The Nun, which is a horror film. Uh, Peppermint, which is some action thriller. Nothing about that. Then you got White Boy Rick, a crime drama, and the nah, Predator. It's about young, no young boy. What is it? White Boy Rick? White Boy Rick. That's got to be about Ric Flair. <laughs> But, like, September is the dumping ground, the same as January is. January and September are the two worst months of the year for movies. Oh, I know. Because January, they have already gone through their Oscar push, and they've already released all of the, uh, like, holiday films and stuff like Star Wars and whatever. September is right at the time frame where they're done with the summer movie releases, and they're starting school. So nothing that's good comes out in September. And for the Predator to come out in September, and the fact that we've had these Predator movies since then, and it's like nobody really seems to be caring all that much, that's coming out September 14th. So they would have had two weeks already before the Predator would have came out. What competition is this? If you can have your release date six days before The Nun and Peppermint, Whatever Peppermint is, I don't know. It can't be that big of a deal. It's got Jennifer Garner in it, and that's, like, the only star that I recognize and stuff. No one likes Jennifer Garner as well. And, you know, she's not, like, some, like, huge... She's a name that people know more for, for gossip magazines than her actual career. I think people know her more for the Capital One commercials now than, like, any acting she does. And for uh, being with Ben Affleck and stuff. Yeah. And The Nun, credit where it's due, that is part of a series where a lot of people pay attention to that horror stuff. But it's a horror thing, so it's like not everybody loves horror movies. And the stuff that comes ahead of time, like the closest movie around there that seems to be anything to really be worried about is, uh, well, it's not The Meg, let's see. Uh, it's not Christopher um, Robin. Would be Mission Impossible Fallout, which is July 27th. That's like two months ahead, though. Right. And it's certainly not going to get some stiff competition from Johnny English Strikes Again on September 20th. So uh, this is really coming off to me more like it's not an issue of, well, we want to get away from that Venom release on October 5th and more of we're probably going to do some reshoots and this probably sucks even more. But releasing it March 1st, I think, is what the, the new release date is going to be. This is the stupidest thing. They're pushing it back that far, and on March 1st, they're going to be up against How to Train Your Dragon 3. Yeah, no. I was like, we were just talking about the other day about like movies coming out in 2019. There's, I, there's a shit ton coming out at the beginning of 2019. 
Like not even just with that. There's just I just I don't get it. And also, by the way, if you were to be like, what was the name of the Johnny English movie? Johnny English like, Strikes Again, I think. Okay, so if you were to tell me, okay, so they're pushing back uh, this shitty Pages wrestling movie. If they were pushing that back because of another wrestling movie be- called Johnny English Strikes Back is coming out that same week, I would believe it because mm-hmm. that Johnny English sounds like a wrestling name. Uh, listen to this lineup that they've got. This is why this makes no stupid uh, no sense to me. It's just really, really stupid. In January of 2019, you've got I mean, everybody has their ideas. They want to watch different things. So some people are like, I only go to the movies to watch like that dumb fucking dogs talking movie that they've been advertising <laughs> now. Some people are like, I'll also go see anything. Some people are like me where it's like more of the superhero stuff. But January 11th, you have Hellboy. January 18th, you have Glass, which is that uh, Unbreakable sequel. Yeah. February 8th, you have the Lego movie sequel. Mm, that's gonna be good i know you didn't weren't a big fan of that one but i love the lego movie i'm sure i'll go say it because please i please. thought it was overrated but like it wasn't bad it's all good this you're overrated <laughs> as a host yeah <laughs> I, am, I am kind of overrated that's why i keep on saying i'm a host <laughs> uh february 15th is the x-men dark phoenix movie which is probably gonna suck balls but it's still a superhero thing and a blumhouse movie blumhouse movies tend to do pretty well and then on the actual release date of Fighting With My Family is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. And then the week right afterward is Captain Marvel. Holy and then shit. two weeks after that, or well, no, one week after that is a Jordan Peele movie. Jordan Peele's popular as hell right now. Oh, yeah. And then a week after that, you've got Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And then a week after that, you got Dumbo. So it's like... They wanted to get away from Predator so they could be in a horrible time because nobody's going to go see Fighting With My Family the the first week because it's got the How to Train Your Dragon thing and some spillover of the X-Men and the Blumhouse one. And then the week right after, where does Captain Marvel? So nobody is going to see this fucking movie. On top of that, they, they're they going to advertise this movie a year in advance at WrestleMania, essentially. Yeah, a year in advance, because March, April, it's not even like this is going to be a topic that's going to apply to the wrestling audience, because the I, I don't know almost anybody that really seems like they want to see this movie. No, no. I've, we've been making fun of it the entire time. We've been making fun of Paige the entire time. Paige, it's just, yeah. it, it, This would only have been better if Paige would have been like, Paige here, but very depressed because she has to announce that it got pushed back <laughs> four months. Hey, Patreon. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds like sad Bulbasaur. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a dumb fucking move. And it just reiterates even more to me that this isn't going to make any money. And they're going to just be like, well, that's a shame. But oddly enough, there is another story about The Rock and movies and wrestling coming out this week too, where the rock had to step down from being the lead in this movie called the Jansen directive, which I don't I have no idea what that's about. And he is now a producer for the movie. And as a producer, he tweeted out or put on Instagram or whatever it was. He said, we finally found who we're going to cast as the lead to replace me. And it's John Cena. And he, <laughs> funny enough, he said, so if you fuck up, I'm going to like lay the smack down on you or something like that, or, you know, prove to you that I could be your ass again or whatever it was that he yeah. had said on there. But um, that's going to be a little bit weird that, I mean, he's not the director, so that's at least a little bit different, you know, but it wouldn't it be kind of strange if the rock was like directing John Cena in a movie or something like that. Or if he's got notes for John Cena, like he shows up on set and he's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me tell you how a real movie star does. this. <laughs> so, uh, I was just looking up what the Jansen directive was and it's based off a book. Did not know that. Fun fact. What's the story? Um, I'm assuming uh, guy is in a position where he needs to fight people, and yeah. I'll I'll just read you, read you the first sentence off of Wikipedia, so we we both will we'll get everything we need to know what this movie will be, and because I already I already have an idea. So it goes: Paul Jansen is an ex Navy SEAL and former <laughs> member of the a U.S. government covert agency called Consular Operations. And yep. then he is, and then he, oh, my bad. Actually, uh, actually, this takes, uh, 
damn, something about a psychopath in Vietnam, and yeah, so essentially, it's the Marines eight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm sure I won't be saying that. I mean, I don't know. I it's just it's going to be really interesting to see to start seeing John Cena in these lead roles because yeah, that's clearly what he's trying to do, which I'm fine with. I think Cena has been in WWE long enough. He and you know, with him doing you know like essentially half years, fucking not even half years now. I don't even think he does a six years of like scheduling with WWE now. But it's gonna be really interesting to see how he does in an acting role going forward. I know a lot of people liked him in what was that movie he was in last year with uh, Schumer? Oh yeah, um, Trainwreck. Get yeah, Trainwreck. Yeah. I, I people seem to have liked him then, which is cool. Um, I, I I loved him when he was on SNL last year. I think he could be really funny in the right roles. I am not a big fan of him. I like I love the Marine. I went and saw that in theaters because I loved John Cena when I was in fifth grade. And I don't think that movie that 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 movie is the best out of all the Marines, and it's actually not that bad for like an action movie. But I do I do not want to see John Cena in an action movie because I can only imagine it's like watching The Miz try to pull off the Marine for like the fifth fucking time now. I don't know if I really buy like like I'm not gonna not see a movie because John Cena's in it. You no, know? that makes me more willing to want to see it. it. At the very least, it's going to be something where I would be like, well, you know, maybe I'll check it out because it's something to talk about on the podcast or something. But at, uh, you know, on top of that, I'm more interested in seeing a movie that seems like it's a legit movie that happens to have John Cena cast as the lead than it is to see this fighting with my family thing. Actually, I'll only be excited for John Cena for any movie ever again. If he's returning as Fred's father, (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were going to say if he gets recast as page and fighting. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. I would love to Cena see that. here. <laughs> <laughs> if they re- if they reshoot that scene of like the Rock like just showing up to walking up to Paige and her brother and starts like cutting a promo on those two and it's just John Cena instead of Paige, I think that'd be <laughs> awesome. And it's a horrible like rotoscope job where they just kind of like green screen them in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you just use perfect. all the footage of like what they filmed before and John Cena's just there and. Like, or you, you just, just erase her and just say, like, oh, it's John Cena. You can't see him. He's in the movie. No, they just, like, terribly edit it. And you can still see, like, her behind John Cena. Because yeah. you do a terrible job just, like, editing him over her. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of seeing things, you're not a fan of WWE Ride Along. And is this the first episode that you've seen? Yes. I want to I point out, it's not that I'm not a fan of WWE Ride Along. I just, it's... I get burnt out on WWE or on wrestling really quickly sometimes if, if I don't enjoy it. And I've always been afraid to check out some of these WWE exclusives online, or at least on the network and nowadays, just because I'm afraid that it would be stuff that I wouldn't enjoy. And I want to preference this. I didn't hate tonight's episode of Ride Along. It's just a very, very weird, weird episode, I feel like. Or maybe well, it's not. And for me. That's the thing. Um, this was actually not a bad episode. <laughs> The episode was Braun and Alexa's Little Big Adventure. If anybody is curious about which one we're talking about, it's Braun and Alexa on one side and Titus Worldwide's trio in another car. And most episodes are kind of like this a little bit. Although, honestly, there have been plenty of episodes where they have less to talk about. And when it comes to something like Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable, they had nothing to do. Oh, gosh. That was, I feel like that would be fucking awkward as hell. You could tell that those two, like, for, like, when they were tag team partners. Like, yeah, they were tag team partners, but you could tell that they had, like, no actual chemistry mm-hmm. outside of the wrestling ring with anything. So I'm, I, I'm not surprised that fucking bombed. And you say that, like, they they don't have much to talk about for this stuff sometimes. It really felt like with this, and maybe it's like this for, like, all episodes, because they obviously are given talking points to talk about. I don't know who gave uh, water. What's her face? The idea to talk about like the one time that she like destroyed someone's bathroom and that, like Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke. Yeah, I, I don't know why I spaced her name really bad, but I don't know who who gave them that talking point. But boy, I I I do not. I I think fart jokes and shit puns are only funny if it's a cartoon now. <laughs> I think that's the South Park episode where Stan just like is just sees literal shit everywhere because everything's just shitty to him. Like I think that's funny. I don't, I don't I don't think I like shit jokes anymore when it's fucking the the wrestlers I I don't really like anyways talking about it. 
my kind of philosophy behind it is a fart in person is almost always funny. Yeah, that's true. But the idea of you should laugh because this is what we're talking about usually isn't. So like Dana going like, oh man, I like stunk up a bathroom. I'm like, okay, kind of gross. <laughs> You know, but I do because it led into the thing that uh, Brom was talking about. You mean, yeah, about like how he like puts every every shit at, yeah, it kind of that to me, that that to me is funny. That Braun Strowman has this running gag that he puts a pin in an app on on the bathrooms that he's taking a shit in while he's on the road, like that he has a hobby of this is really fucking ridiculous. Strowman's gonna be one of the weirdest fucking people to like. I I I get why they did the pairing of Alexa and Braun, especially after like the the mix the mix mix match challenge stuff. I get why, but man, that's such a weird pairing still, and it's still a little awkward. It's adorable at the same time, because it's like every guy definitely has like the biggest fucking crush on Alexa Bliss. Oh yeah, and I, and I don't blame her. She's a She's hot. She's fucking adorable as hell. I I get that she's probably like a like a b i t c h, you know, a bitch, but <laughs> bitch, <laughs> a fucking bitch, but it, Mitch rather. But it's <laughs> I I it's I'm glad that they did. I like them. I thought like their part was funny. It was interesting. The, the them getting stuck at Wendy's was like everyone else is funny. Him tweeting at Wendy's was funny as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh yeah, so if it, if I was gonna complain about anything, it it was it was gonna be Titus worldwide. However, Apollo Cruz uh, saved the day because Titus is like, hey, you know why I like you guys? Because you're good people, and he's and Apollo was like, oh, you almost brought a tear to my eye. Yeah, Apollo think, didn't say almost anything. This he episode. didn't. That was like the one thing he said that made me laugh. He's just like sitting in the back, just kind of like, oh, I'm getting a paycheck for this. Meanwhile, Titus O'Neil is like calling Batista. He's like in with dana's mom like they're all like best buds or something <laughs> it's a little bit strange yeah that was a little strange talking about like you know you got to make some food for us we're gonna come over there like calling her by her first name and calling her mom and stuff and i was just like all right that's kind of strange but one of my favorite parts of the episode was uh braun saying something about like you know well maybe there's like a handsome prince underneath this uh thing like shrek and then he's like what am i kidding i'm beautiful <laughs> <laughs> i love Rod strobin <laughs> My absolute favorite part, though, is then they're playing that little game, and it's like the, the question game, which was fucking yeah. stupid. But that uh, Braun Strowman just says, check another W for the Y chromosomes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Braun Strowman is exactly what we kind of are picturing Braun Strowman to be. Like, he's fulfilling the Ryback personality, kind of. Like, he's yeah, just sort of like, you know, going to get these hands and shit, and I'm going to eat some fries and take a dump in your place. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, the get the the get, the origin story for the get hands thing I've heard before, but I just think it's so fucking hilarious that that came from just him, just like not even flubbing a line, but just him just saying something off the top of his head, and it just yeah. worked out perfectly. I would have thought that he would have been like promoted ahead of time to be like, all right, we want to make this one of your catchphrases. So why don't you say that? And for him to I, just sort of be like, oh, I don't know, get these hands, and then it's just kind of like, all right, let's sell some t-shirts and. I, I feel like we joked about that at some point as well with someone. We were joking about that a long time ago because we had found some meme on Reddit. Yes. But I, okay. I had found something on that and I posted it in the group and everybody was laughing their asses off. And then we kept finding other ones that were get these hands where it was something like some kid in a hospital bed yes. <laughs> or something. Okay. You, do, you remember like? Yes, I remember that one. I don't remember what the line was, but it was something along the lines of like, you know, uh, a guy he's talking about like his brother or something like that and it was like you know my brother's uh an asshole they're gonna give him some ivs but i'm gonna give him these hands or something <laughs> like that where it's just kind of like i remember busting my fucking uh busting out laughing because it was just like to me that phrase get these hands was hilarious and then you know fast forward like two years or whatever it was and braun Strowman says it and i was just kind of like this is amazing he's catching up to reddit <laughs> Maybe he's a active uh, person uh, on Reddit. Maybe, but he was saying that he had never said that phrase before, and that's like that's kind of strange for him to just come out with that and then just be like, "What the fuck am I talking about?" <laughs> you know? 
if any of these wrestlers, if, if it turns out that they actively scroll like the conspiracy theory uh, thread on Reddit, I will be very disappointed in them. And I could see a couple of them. The Bo Dallas apparently is like really into conspiracies. Well, I big well big Cass is a diehard Republican, so you know they're in the conspiracy theory. So he he definitely would not surprise me. <laughs> no offense, <laughs> I sh- I sh- I've been shitting on people, not me, a lot on here lately, and I'm not trying to, but I'm just saying they are in deep into conspiracy theories. <laughs> I'm, so I'm what's just, your favorite conspiracy theory? Which uh, one do you buy into? If like I'm gonna buy into any of them. I don't buy into the Illuminati. I think that's fucking stupid. That was man, Bohemian Grove. <laughs> uh, you got me there. Um, you know, a part of me, a part of me, uh, if I had to go with one, it would have to be because I really don't buy conspiracy theories. It would just have to be that Bin Laden is not actually dead because they never actually hmm. showed his body, which I get why. But it's like, come on, I just want to see the dead body. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm surprised be... you went with that instead of uh, something like JFK not really being killed by Oswald alone. Eh, I mean, fuck, dude. Like, I, I mean, probably that that was, <laughs> he, he he might have been killed by Oswald. Well, I mean, that might have been like a deep conspiracy because you know the U.S. government hated JFK secretly, and you know JFK's father was deep into Chicago mobs and mafia crime and JFK was doing a really decent job with the mafia at that time. So there's a lot of conspiracies about how the mafia, you know, hired Lee Harvey Oswald to get him. So there's a few conspiracies revolving around JFK that are interesting, but I don't know. It's, conspiracy theories are just that conspiracies. And it's just like, I, I don't know. I, 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 I did believe that Chris Benoit didn't kill his family for a while. Hmm. I, you I thought it was I, Sullivan. Uh, I don't know, Kevin Sullivan. Yeah, that maybe. Well, that's a that's the main one I've heard where it's been like, oh, it was actually him instead. And... <laughs> it's not that I it's not that I like believed in the conspiracy theory because I believe in the ev- evidence. I just wanted to believe that Crispin Wall wasn't a shitty person and killed his fucking family. <laughs> I think, but I th- I think that's with most people. I, it's just like. Uh, with like most of these like conspiracy theories or like uh, they that revolve around like shitty people doing shitty things, it's just like a cop out to like try to like make that person not look bad. Oh, that's- and to cope because that's like all the people that go like Elvis isn't really dead, and it's like Elvis would have been dead a long time ago even if it was just natural causes. Like that yeah. that fucker is dead. He's not living on an island with Tupac somewhere. They're dead. <laughs> Actually, do you believe in the? Do you believe that Tupac's dead? Oh yeah. Oh well, that's embarrassing because he's not. <laughs> so I was fucking with you. Did you ever see that uh, Chappelle show sketch of the? Uh, I wrote this song in '94. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I, I fucking walked. love that. Ah, fuck, Stop was... pumping the table. <laughs> Shit's I, amazing. I haven't watched Chappelle show in God knows how long. I haven't it's... seen it since it was uh, still on the air. So really, yeah. The only thing I've gone back to watch is that and the uh, the Real World sketch. Ooh. They're the only two things that I've gone back to rewatch. I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah. I think that's probably it. Good show, though. No, it's fucking it's hilarious. Fan- no, it is a fucking fantastic show. So that's all the topics I have written down. Anything else you want to talk about? I mean, I don't know. I threw something out about Santina Marilla winning the Rumble earlier in one of the group chats, but it's not that big of a deal. What about him winning the Rumble? Um. So... I threw out, like, I said, guys, what if what if Edge's last match was against Santino Marillo because he won the Royal fucking Rumble instead of Alberto Del Rio? Imagine that. <laughs> just, just imagine that. Just, like, this huge storied career for Edge. This is, you know, like I said, nothing to do with the hot tags at all. But <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with anything. Just a thought I've had. But just imagine, just, like, this big storied career. You know, Edge, you know. Like a nine-time world champion, you know, a Royal Rumble winner, the first Money in the Bank winner, Mister Oppor- what, what is what is the ultimate opportunist? What was yeah. his? Name? Okay, that was his name. That's what I thought. <laughs> Mister <And>, Opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was about to say Mister Kennedy, to be honest with you, but um, his last match, you know, on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania 27, against Santina Marella, <laughs> the winner of two 
rumble uh battle royales one as a female and one as a guy just imagine that and then he just kind of goes like yeah i gotta retire santino fucked me up too much <laughs> yes that would have been that would have been so lackluster it probably would have came off way worse if that's how it went especially with after because santina or santino after that rumble definitely didn't do too much other than winning the united states title against jack swagger so hmm Fun fact, yes. The, the, so, for those of you who like want to know, like, damn, what does you think about all day, every day? Like, God, just like I want to know what's in the mind of Drew White. I think of bullshit like that. It's like <laughs> nothing that really matters, but just what ifs. <laughs> well, what if? Uh... Nah, I'm not gonna go with that. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that up to anybody else. But uh, whatever you guys think about. Whenever it comes to any of these topics, go ahead and drop your comments below and tell us what you think about it, whether it's the Santino situation or any of the hot tags that we talked about or anything else you want to talk about. Just drop a comment. We'll leave some comments back or something like that. Uh, there's the hot tags of the week. Yeah. Pretty. pretty just kind of blah. Ah, it's hot, though. A little steamy. Going to do that collar kind of thing. Did it sizzle much for you? Man, you know what? Real quick aside, I'm out at a diner the other day, and I'm waiting on a slice of chocolate mousse cheesecake. Ooh. And uh, I just hear, (laughs) and I'm like, what the fuck is that noise? And it's this uh, waitress coming around with two steaks on a, like, one of those kind of skillets that would, like, just, like, specifically sit there and sizzle. Yes. And I didn't see that at all because, like, she had come out from an area that was, like, out of my peripheral vision. So I thought it was just, like, I don't know, like a swarm of locusts outside or something like that. <laughs> and it freaked me out for a good second, so. Did you think the apocalypse was coming? Nah. Oh. I hadn't been caught up in the rapture yet. Uh, well, oh, before we finish, I do want to say, I, I don't know how I did not mention this earlier, but boy, when Bron was talking about Red Lobster, it made me so fucking hungry. Oh, those biscuits were great. Oh, I love the biscuits. And he's talked about lobster. And I was like, oh, my God. I, there's like, they're too bad there's no red lobster right next to me right now. <laughs> Old school jokes. Drew going to red lobster. All right, guys. That's it for the hot tags. Thanks for, list- uh, thanks for listening to us, everybody. Remember the next things that we got coming up later on this week. We're going to be doing our predictions for Backlash on Wednesday. So Wednesday night at some point is when you'll be hearing that up on the channel. And then, of course, after Backlash, we're going to be doing our post-show review of that show. And then it's a little bit weird because next week we don't have anything yet. And thankfully, it's not going to be a pay-per-view thing. So we have a little bit of flexibility And the week after that, same kind of deal. Although I'm going to have to record something ahead of time for that. So we're going to have to figure out two weeks worth of main events to do next week to set up for those weeks and stuff. So I'm pretty sure that next week at some point we're going to play an edition of Play the Game. And either that'll be next week or the week after that is when you'll see that. And I kind of want to do something different. And I haven't quite decided yet. So we might be having Mount Rushmore. Maybe one more match. Maybe Over Under. Maybe split crowd. I don't know. Or maybe we'll bring back an oldie like Superstar Scores or Top Rope List or Belter Bury or Finisher versus Finisher. I don't know what the case may be. So if you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments below of what you'd like to see as well, too. And not just uh, segment wise, but maybe topic wise, too. You know, like uh, if it's like, you know, Mount Rushmore, the best tag teams of all time or, or one more match, Shawn Michaels, whatever the case may be. Drop your suggestions in the comments below. But make sure you also hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications for the videos that we do post up. And if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, then you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at SmartOutMoment. And of course, always check out SmartOutMoment.com too for all the other stuff that's happening there. Follow Drew White on the Twitter machine, as he would call it, at yeah. Joseph White. Yeah. Go, if you want to subscribe to my YouTube where there might be 50 videos because I might have posted 50 videos, uh, you could go there and subscribe, Mick Frickin' Duncan. Or you could go there and see that there's nothing there because there's never nothing there as well. But you could just go and subscribe for shits and giggles. It'd be great if, like, right now you just uploaded 50 videos of just, like, a number one on, like, a blank <laughs> screen. Then it's number two, number three, number four, whatever like that. 
I should. For, uh, I think it was Declan had been the only one that came across it. But a while back, I remember really promoting this idea of like, oh, I got this new project. and you got, I'm not going to be able to tell you guys about it. I'm not going to talk about it at all. And it was just the Silent Hour show. And that's actually a YouTube channel. And that's a Facebook page and stuff, the Silent Hour show. Where it's just inc- me just saying, all right, welcome to the Silent Hour show, episode one. And it's 60 minutes of silence. <laughs> Jesus Christ, then- Tony. It was one of those ideas I had in the middle of the night, and I just couldn't sleep. And I'm like, I have to write this down. This is dumb as hell, and I feel like doing it. And just do an yeah. episode. Fuck you. Know you should have saved that for like an April Fool's joke for Smack Talk one year. Well, I actually was planning on doing an April Fool's thing related to that at some point. Um, and uh, well, we could just edit this out, so don't worry. No, nah, I'm not gonna do it on Smack Talk. Yeah. Boo. Well, now <laughs> they know. So who knows? There might be an April Fool's thing somewhere at some point on the Silent Hour Show YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, where yeah. they talk for an hour instead. Maybe. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's uh, if you want to follow that, it's Facebook.com/slash Silent Hour Show. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Can't believe. I yeah. think it's that. It's actually up. You know, it's <laughs> one of those things. Maybe it isn't that. Maybe it's something else. Silent Hour Show. Let me I, double check. I can't wait for you to get the notifi- one notification of someone liking that page. Yep. It's Facebook.com slash Silent Hour Show. And it's, uh, it's, oh, they don't let you see how many people have liked your pages anymore? They don't? Oh, it's not telling me. Oh, man. <sighs> well, I gotta like this page. Really, like, man. <laughs> I just love a- that all my notifications for I don't know how many years now. I think I I did this back in. Uh, yeah, now Drew White likes this. So I posted that episode October 2016. So for you know a year and a half, all the notifications I've ever gotten from this have been Silent Hour Show will be unpublished because it hasn't been active. Visit or update your page to keep God. it visible. <laughs> And now it's, hey, Drew White likes Silent Hour Show. So yeah, so show us some support for the Silent Hour Show and we might shut up for you. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if we will, but we maybe. But thanks for listening to this, everybody. Catch us the next time and we will see you there. This has been another Smart Out Moment and we're being counted out.